Hey everyone, this is David from thejsguy.com and today I wanted to show an example of refactoring a set of acceptance and integration tests to using Ember CLI page object. So Ember CLI page object is an add-on that basically implements the page object design pattern. If you've never heard of this pattern, it's used to isolate HTML structure and CSS selectors from your tests. So I'd say one of the main benefits of it is that it really improves test readability. You no longer have a lot of selectors in your test are kind of moved off into a single place into a page object. And this really helps also with uh, the number of changes you have to make when the CSS selectors change or when your DOM st structure changes a little bit. So you actually don't need to use Ember CLI page object to implement the page object design pattern, but it just turns out that there's an add-on for it that really helps facilitate kind of writing these tests using page objects. And it just makes things a little bit easier and provides a little bit more convention around using this pattern. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. So I created a simple application that displays a list of contacts onto the page and each contact can be clicked and you can show more details about the contact. You can actually search through these contacts. So if I wanna search for Tav, you can see you know it filters on the fly. And when you click any of these, you can see that it shows their corresponding details. Let me go ahead and show you the corresponding HTML that gets generated. So each contact has a corresponding div with a data test attribute called contact. If you expand it, you can see the H3. And then when any of these are clicked, the actual details pop in and it's just a little bit more information. So an H4 and a couple paragraphs. So I've set up two different types of tests, one acceptance test and one integration test. And for the acceptance test, uh, the server.create, this is using Ember CLI Mirage. So I just kind of create some fake data. If you want to know more about that, I posted the code on GitHub, so you can look through that. But we're simply visiting the context route, and I just want to check to see if there's three different contexts displayed on the page. And the second test, it's actually filling in the search box and then checking to make sure that only the filtered contacts are shown. So let's go ahead and refactor this to using Ember CLI page object. To install Ember CLI page object, you install it just like any other add-on. You run Ember install Ember CLI page object and you're good to go. I've already done it, so I'm not gonna do it again. Also, just so you can see, all of the tests are currently passing for this acceptance test. And we can go ahead and filter this down to the corresponding acceptance test. All right, so once you have Ember CLI page object installed, we need to go ahead and generate a page object. So we can use that using the generator and I can say Ember G page object and I'll just call this page object contacts. And this will go ahead and create a file in test pages contacts uh, .js. So when we ran that command, it generated this object. And in this object, we can give it a series of properties and methods that basically describe what we want to do in our web page. If we go back to our test, one of the things I don't like about the current first test is that there's this searching for a for all elements with the data test attribute. You know, this could be a little bit cleaner. So Ember CLI page object actually has something called collections built into it. So what we can say is I have a collection of contacts and this will basically keep track of how many are on the page. So I'm gonna say contacts and you can call this really whatever you want, but there's a keyword called collection. And all of these functions hang off of page object, which gets imported from Ember CLI page object, or you can destructure them just yourself at the top. I've started preferring destructuring just because having page object all over the page gets a little repetitive. So I'm going to import collection and remove this. And so I'm going to have a collection of contacts. And so this is where we can say, hey, find all the list of contacts on our page. And so the property it expects is item scope. And the item scope is that same selector in our test. So I can go ahead and just copy this out and paste this right here. So now this page object will under will find all contacts using this selector and store it under a property called contacts. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this test and then we're just going to refactor it. So we can say, well, first we need to go back and we can say page.visit and we no longer need to put slash contacts. We could tell it to visit using this route. So visit becomes a method when we use the visitable method and we can tell it the particular route. So we're visiting the page and now we can say 
I wanted to assert basically three contacts are rendered on the page. So we can say page.contacts dot count. And that's kind of like dot length. So I want to count the number of contacts on the page and it should be three. So let's go ahead and check to see if our tests are still passing. And no, they're not. It's because page is not defined. We haven't actually imported the page into our tests. Let's go ahead and do that. So at the top, we can go ahead and say import page from, and I've called my project refactoring to page objects slash test slash pages slash contacts. Let's go back and check to see if our tests are passing and everything still works. Great. So if we compare these two different types of tests, you can see one has selectors and one doesn't. Even though this is a really simple example, you can probably agree that this reads a little bit nicer than this. And you know, if we have to find contacts in several other tests, we no longer have to repeat this one piece. We can kind of just say page.contacts. But again, I'd say this pattern really shines as your tests get a little bit more complicated. Let's go ahead and refactor this next test. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy it and then we can start modifying this one. So the first thing we can say is page.visit and then we can remove this context route. And then wouldn't it be nice if we could actually say page.fillin search input with Eric instead of saying the actual selector and the name. So we can actually go ahead and create this method right here into our page object. So in our page object, we can say fill in search input with and this takes another uh, method off a page object. We can call it, it's a fillable. And the selector is contact search. And again, we need to import this. So we can say fillable. And this will basically return a function that we can call with the corresponding value. So we can say fill in search input with. All right, we can get rid of that. And now, like we had before where we're finding all the contacts, we can change this up and we can say page.contacts.count is now two. And let's just see if our tests are passing. Everything looks good. Now, how can we clean up these gross selectors? We have to kind of pick off each one and then check the name. It's a little tedious and it can be a little hard to read. So one of the cool things about collections in page objects is we can actually give them uh, their own properties for each object or each uh, thing in the collection. And we can do that, we can say, by using the item keyword. And so for every contact item in the collection, we can say there's a full name and we wanna grab the text from the H3. So text will basically look for um, we'll be able to search for all H3s and it will just grab the text and trim it for us. So again, we need to import this from Ember CLI page object and we can grab full name now off of each contact. We can say page.contacts and I wanna get the first one so we can pass in the index and I can say the full name is Erica Johnson. We look at our test, it's still passing. And lastly, let's go ahead and do this last one. We can say page.contacts one dot full name is Eric Costum. If we look at our test, still passing. Now if we compare these two, I'm sure you'll agree this also reads a lot better than having these data test selectors or whatever your selectors may be. And in fact, if you don't like this page.duplication, we can even chain these methods together. So we can say page.visit dot and then fill it in kind of like uh, chaining in jQuery. So if we do this, this should still pass as well. So that's the acceptance test. Let's move on to the integration test and we're gonna go ahead and refactor that as well. So I have one integration test and I have a component called contact details which basically encapsulates that H3 and the details. So if we open up contact details HBS, you can just see we have, uh, when you click on the actual header, well it shows the first name and last name but then it expands details expanded using the MUT helper and it shows these details. And then we have individual data test selectors for the title, the job, and the job description. So we're gonna check a number of things on this page. We're gonna check to make sure that when we click on this H3, these get expanded. And before you click on it, it's hidden. We'll also check to make sure that these things are rendered on the page. And this will give a good variety of using the different methods inside of Ember CLI page object. 
Okay, so here's our test. You can see that we're just simply rendering the contact component. I've set up the contact using some fixture data. And then we're just checking to make sure the H3 has the full name. We also check to make sure the details, the length is zero. So when you before you click on it, you can't even see the details. Then once you click on it, then the details get expanded and you can see it. And then we can actually look at the title of the job and job description. So the first thing I'll do is I'll go ahead and copy this test. So we can compare the two. And like before, we need to import this page object. So we can say import page from refactoring to page object slash test slash pages slash contacts. Now you can break up your page objects however you wish, but I just typically represent this single page as the one page object, and then that encapsulates everything so I can reuse it for my components or the acceptance test. But you can really do it however you wish. All right, so let's go ahead and open up the test to make sure they're all passing. I'm going to change the filtered test to integration component. So everything's good. We have two of the duplicated tests. So one of the main differences with using page object with an integration test is we need to set the context. So we can say set context to this, meaning the current component. And you just kind of do this before and after uh, each test. You could do this in, within each test, but I just found it's a little bit easier or it's less repeated if you just put them in the before and after each. So we can say before and after each remove context and we'll say this. But other than that, it's pretty much the same. Okay, so instead of saying this.render, we're gonna say page.render. So we're rendering the component on the page. And the first thing I wanna do is let's refactor this line to use the page object. So we can say assert.equal and we can say page.contacts, and we wanna grab the first contact. So even though we only have one contact on the page, we're finding all of them by this data test equals contact attribute. And this attribute actually exists on the contact details component. So if we look at contact details JS, I've just set up an attribute binding for a data test contact. So we're just finding really, even though there's really only one, we're just finding the first one. We can say grab the full name and we expect it to be Dwayne Johnson. We'll comment this out and we'll check to make sure everything passes still. Everything looks good. And you can see that we're just reusing the same exact syntax that we did before because we already set up this context collection. You don't really have to try and think about what was the selector or you know try and look into other tests to find that selector. It's, it's a little bit easier to rem remember, which helps with writing tests and mixing making writing tests a little bit faster. All right, so how do we go about handling this other thing where we say, let's check to see if something is present on the page or if it's hidden. If we go back to our page object, for each item, we can say um, there's another keyword called is visible and is hidden, and this allows us to select an element on the page and see basically if it's hidden or visible. So I wanna have one called details shown. And I'm gonna say is visible, and this comes from a page object. And the selector will be data test hook, or let's see, data test equals details. So data details shown will be true if it's visible. And then we can do the exact same thing. I'm just going to copy this selector. You can say details hidden. And there's is hidden. And just pass it the same exact thing. So we also need to import these. You can say is visible and is hidden. All right, so now we can refactor this piece. We can say, well, we can refactor this particular line. So we can say assert.equal page.contacts. And because we only have one, like I said earlier, we're going to grab the first one. And we want to check to see if details shown is true. So we can say, or let's see, actually details hidden is true. And alternatively, actually, we could just say assert.ok. So we want to see if the details are hidden. And likewise, when we click it, we can say assert.ok, page.contacts, zero, details visible. and we can delete these two.
Let's check to see if our tests pass. All right, so I made a mistake. Ah, I figured out what was wrong. Okay, so in my page object, I called detail shown, but here I said details visible. So this should be detail shown. Okay, so all the tests are passing, great. All right, so let's refactor this clicking on the H3. Let's create another one and we'll call it click on name. So you can call it whatever you want, but this seems the most intuitive. And click on name, it is going to be a clickable. So there's another method off of page object called clickable and we pass it a selector and this will basically create something that we can click on. And we'll go ahead and add this import. We can say clickable. And rather than triggering it as uh, using this.h3 click, we can say page.click on name. So we click on the name and then the details are shown. And actually we need to change this so it's contact zero, click on name. Our tests are passing. Okay, so two more other things. So I just want to check that the title and the job and the job description are all good. Basically these can get replaced with these following lines. Just like before, we've just created some extra properties, title, job, job description. We can go ahead and comment these out. And then we can go ahead and add these to our page object. So we have title, job, and job description also using text and everything should all be good. Let's check to see if our tests pass. And they are. When you compare this test to our previous test, you can see that there's no more selectors and things do read a little bit better. This was also wasn't a very complicated test, but you can imagine if you have to click more than one thing, you have to collect a collection of things. It just makes it just that much more readable and that much faster to write subsequent tests because a lot of the grunt work kind of gets added to this page object every time you write a new test. So before we end, I just wanted to go through the documentation a little bit. There's a lot to it, but you can find all of what we did in uh, collections. So this is talks about how to use collections, which is like a list of things in your DOM. There's also predicates, which allow us to do things like uh, check to see if something is visible or hidden. And this uh, tripped me up a little bit at first because I thought it was just you know checking to see if something was you know hidden or visible by the CSS um, by the styles but it's actually if something is even present in the DOM or not. So, but from the user perspective, like you can actually, is it visible or hidden? So that can mean, you know, two different things, whether you're hiding it in CSS or whether it's actually present in the DOM. There's also queries. So if you want to check like the count or you want to grab the text or the value of an input, or if you want to check the property of different elements, there's also actions. So if you want something to be clickable or fillable or uh, click on text, there's a few different options there. So there's kind of a lot to it, but I'd say you know these couple of tests cover a, a decent chunk of them, and hopefully this gets you started using Ember CLI page object. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments and how you're finding Ember CLI page object and the page object pattern. Thanks for watching.